Hey friends, welcome to Spirit Connection. Doug Addison here, and I've got a, an exciting prophetic word that I'm going to deliver uh, tonight on the webcast, and we do this the first Wednesday of every month. This is June 5th, 2019, and for, uh, actually, just be honest with you, I'm pre-recording this, and uh, the Lord spoke to me to start doing that. I normally do it live, and you can still put your questions in and everything, but the Lord gave me some instructions to start changing things up, and um, I'm doing some of this, what we would call here in Hollywood, is is tape delayed. Uh, I, I record this earlier and, and uh, been presenting it to you as if it's live. You Really, you, my team's still on. If I wouldn't have told you, you wouldn't know the difference. But out of full transparency, uh, just letting you know that I'm still doing what I'm doing, but the Lord's showing me some different ways to do things, and we have some things coming. It's going to be really cool. So June 5th, 2019, Spirit Connection. And Lord, we just pray right now for the power, the Pentecost power of God to come. We ask, Lord that you would bring this download from heaven on earth as it is in heaven. I pray, Lord, that you would open the heavens right now over everybody to be able to receive and hear. And those who are hurting, the Lord has some good, I tell you, there's some good news tonight because there's an anointing coming that's going to break off some things and it's going to be a really exciting time. Lord, I ask now in Jesus' name, amen. Uh, Listen. My website is DougAddison.com, and you can follow me on Facebook, The Doug Addison, Instagram and Twitter, Doug T. Addison. Also, remember to pick up my app, and it's the free app. It's both uh, for Androids and Apple. Uh, Just go look for Doug Addison in the Apple Store or in Google Play, uh, the same thing. And you can get the daily prophetic word delivered to you. In fact, you can watch my videos and things. If you're trying to do a negativity fast, which I recommend... My app is a good way to do it because it's not social media and it is a negative free atmosphere. So um, I'm excited about what's going on. I'm going to release this word. It's a strategic word, really is, because this is now nine months since Yom Kippur, which was the Jewish uh, holiday back in September. It was called the... the, um, It's... uh, when basically God releases things from heaven. Now I'm not, I'm not really on the in the Old Testament law or anything like that. But but God does work. He works on all types of calendars, but He works strongly, especially when it comes to hearing His voice. He does use that Jewish calendar still. So Yom Kippur was was September nineteenth, twenty eighteen. That's the Day of Atonement, and this was just a. Uh, uh, believe me, our sins are atoned for. Don't, don't have to worry about that. If, you, if you've been following me, you know what I'm saying. The Lord spoke to me back then. He said, hey, listen, that June 19th, nine months from the day that I got this download, this revelation, it's going to birth like a baby. And so we are in this month. We're going to birth something new that God has now been maturating. It's been growing. It's been inside just... Uh, I guess, uh, bringing about what God had intended. And I ask now, Lord, that you would bring these things to fruition in Jesus' name. Wow, I I feel powerfully, uh, the presence is strong. I feel like something's going to happen this month. And this is a powerful time. I mentioned Pentecost, and this June 8th through the 10th of this month uh, is... Jewish festival uh, called the Feast of Weeks, also known as Pentecost, and it's June 9th. So from Friday night, I think it's, I don't know the exact what days those are, but June 8th at sundown to June 10th. During that time, and right smack in the middle is June 9th. That's when uh, the Christians celebrate Pentecost, but actually there's a there's something that happened years ago, back in the, in the Acts chapter 2, when the Lord chose... Uh, he chose the the Feast of Weeks and the day of Pentecost, we call it, when the power came that, that Jesus had promised. And he had said this, Acts 1 in verse 3, he says, do, here was his instructions before he went back to heaven. He goes, 
Don't leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you've heard me speak about. For John baptized you with water, but in a few days you will be baptized by the Holy Spirit. That's a timing word, right? In a few days. I believe the Lord's doing something new right now. And I, you know, there's a lot of uh, different types of understanding of what that means, you know, to be baptized by the Holy Spirit. And, and you know, we have the, uh, do you have to speak in tongues type of thing going on? Uh, and I'm not talking about that right now. I'm talking about God's going to do something new, radically new, starting this month. So, Lord, we want to see it. In, in Acts 1.8, Jesus said that you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Now, this is important. Uh, it's a timing word. If you want to be, if you want to get into the timing of the Lord, that's what's going on right now. And Jesus uh, you know, he was then ascended back into heaven. And once he got there, he, he did, he promised that he sent the Holy Spirit, which we have now. That's why it's way different in the New Testament to operate prophetically as opposed to the Old Testament. And I, we need both. But the New Testament, we have the Holy Spirit in us. We all can hear the Lord. We all can prophesy. We all have everything that you need. Right now, you have everything that you need to succeed in the Lord. And God is releasing this year. He said to me, I'm releasing power to be a new witness, a new strategy on sharing God's love is coming this year. This is to set us up for revival. Our old ways of trying to reach people, you know, maybe I'm not knocking these, but uh, using tracks or try to lead everyone to Jesus. That's not going to work in this new revival. And that's why I do all kinds of unusual things. You know, I do tattoo interpretation, dream interpretation. I'm giving prophetic words, opening people up everywhere because uh, people need God. They need to know that God loves them. They need an encouraging word. And so uh, even beyond what I'm talking about right here, God's going to release some new strategies to be a witness. And I'm ready. I'm saying, come on, Lord, do it. I'm so ready for something new. And so uh, here it comes. The, the first, what we're going to see, we're going to see a release of power inside the church. And that's important because God wants to use uh, Christians uh, currently. You know, he wants to use the church first. He always did that. In fact, the Apostle Paul, if you remember, he would always go to the church first uh, and then he would, uh, he would go from there. Uh, and go outside. He would, and so God does the same type of thing. He actually wants to use you where you are right now, and then uh, He wants to bring this into a place where you're in line with whatever God is doing. Whether you're in line at the grocery store or you're in, you know, you're in line, you know, uh, whatever. God's going to line you up right now to get into his timing. And this is a timing prophetic word. And I just pray that you would understand these things and maybe you can grasp what I'm saying here. And um, this is something that's going to happen first. We're going to see like a download, a deluge with the, of, of the power of God that's going to start happening in people first within the church. Then we're going to see something happen outside the church. But we have to get, you know, I'm not just saying church. I'm just saying that with a capital C. doesn't mean you have to go to church. It's going to be in a church. I'm just saying within Christians. Some Christians don't go to, maybe some Christians don't go to church. Or maybe you, uh, like a lot of people, consider this their church. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, so you'll know. There's going to be a release of power. Then I had a vision. And I saw wounded warriors on a battlefield. And they were the ones who had been there. And many of you are the wounded warriors. And then I saw this Ezekiel 37 wind come. And if you don't know it, 
you know, the, the wind, it's called the breath of God came. And when he, uh, the Lord said to Ezekiel, prophesy the breath of the Lord. And that was the breath. And it was a Hebrew word called bara. And bara is creation. That's the same breath that came and breathed upon Adam. That's the power that's coming right now to raise people spiritually from the dead, to do some things that we haven't seen in a long time. So uh, this is going to be a powerful time. And so I gave you the insight into why June 19th is important. That doesn't mean that this is like a lucky day or everything. Uh, uh, You know, uh, if you missed it, uh, you know, it's nothing like that at all. I'm just saying, watch for June 19th to be a turning point for you. Because back in in September, now I released a prophetic word uh, right after the Jewish New Year, and I released it in October. You'll you can go out and Google this. It's called the Ancient Paths and Time of Transition. That was my um, my uh, prophetic word for the New Year as far as the Jewish time. I I honor both calendars. Believe me, I, I don't want to get confusing here, but I, I released this prophetic word. This was something that was going to start happening, and it was an encounter I had that I want to go over. Now, if you want to listen to a special podcast I did, it was episode 64 on Spirit Connection Podcast, and I talk about the actual dreams and encounter the details of it, and it's called uh, Prophecy of Dreams that uh, Are Coming in the Days of Awe. 2018. Now that just look for episode 64. You can Google Doug Addison's uh, Spirit Connection podcast episode 64. It'll come up, and or just find it on my website. I'm telling you, something big's about to open. And during that time, here's what happened. September 19th, I had a dream that I uh, that was by the way that was Yom Kippur was starting then that I was standing in front of a huge sliding glass door that led to a place where God wanted us to go for this year. And there was a beautiful pool of water with trees outside. And, and it was like, wow, it was nice. T- palm trees in my, in my vision because I live on the West Coast. There was definitely no Christmas trees. But this was, even though God wants to use Christmas, anyway, I'm just saying, it was so beautiful. And... I tried to get through because I knew we had to move. This is still the dream. But you could only open far enough for yourself to go through. And I know I'm kind of skinny, so it didn't open far. But what the Lord said is, I knew this, that he was moving right now where you can't take things from the previous season. That doesn't mean you're going to throw out everything, but he's going to start focusing differently. And so when I woke up, I heard the Lord say, the doorway for this new year, which we're in right now, that you're entering right now, you will not be able to take the things from the past into the new season. And the Lord says, I'm going to create a narrow time of transition. That means you'll have to get rid of some stuff. I've been walking through it immediately. This happened to me back then. I've been releasing uh, these, uh, you know, they're called my prophetic words, in a book form. They're called uh, Prophetic Forecast. I've been doing that over and over. In fact, right after Yom Kippur in September, I wrote the book. I wrote eight chapters of a book, and in the midst of writing after I wrote it, the Lord says, hey, guess what? I'm going to change things up on you just like that prophetic word says. I'm going to change. I'm going to give you a narrow focus. I'm going to give you something new. And he told me, I don't want you to release it a book, but I want you to release it like you normally do. I do other revelation where I do a lot of it on my podcast, on my webcast. So I did in January and February. Then I did a special training and I invited people in. In fact, we're rerunning that this month. That's why it's important to get a hold of this. Uh, we're rerunning that special training because it was I took the prophetic word that I would normally put in a book and I released it in an activated way, the, you know, in, in an interactive way. And so this happened to be already the ancient path and narrow door. I got up that morning. September 19th, and I had an encounter with the Lord. And when this happened, the Bible opened strategically. Yes, I have to actually open it. It's, you know, I actually take 
my encounter's Bible and I start to pray and he either directs me someplace or sometimes it just opens strategically. Most of the time it does. And I start to uh, read and pray and suddenly I start seeing interactive visions. And this is interactive meaning it's like I'm there. And it's so It's so real. This is how I hear God now. Previously, before 2017, before I had 50 days of encounters like this in heaven, I used to see visions and then go to the Bible and look it up. Ever since then, the Lord changed it. It's all based on the Word. And it's just, again, He's changing things up. That's the narrow focus. That's the shift that He's doing right now. And so in the encounter back last year, uh, the Lord said to me, my Bible opened to something that, that was so powerful. Actually opened several times, the same place. Jeremiah 6, 16. And this is what the Lord says. Stand at the crossroads and look and ask for the ancient path. Ask for the good way and walk in it. And you will find rest for your souls. Now, this, I was suddenly standing at this ancient crossroads with the Lord, the ancient paths, because, you know, it really hasn't been a restful time. But I knew that there was a restful time coming. We've had to battle. We've been going through turmoil. We've been going through nine months right now. That's what the Lord said, a birthing pains to bring these things. It's more than nine months for some people, but specifically the last nine months, has been like birthing a new baby. It's gotten really intense for a lot of people. That's why I've got some good news. I'm going to release a prayer over you that's going to break you out if you feel stuck. So it, back to the, the encounter. I entered the Spirit during the encounter, and I was standing at the crossroads. This was the Jeremiah 616 crossroads with the Lord. And there was signposts that went all these different directions, and the Lord said, these are the choices and paths available to many of my people this year. And he asked, which one do you want to choose? He said, choose your pathway of life. And so I looked around and wow, some of them were a uh, little really glitzy. And, uh, you know, there was never a, it wasn't a right or wrong decision. I had a choice, you know, God's not a dictator, you know, he, he, he's a, he's a good loving father. He wants to walk you through stuff and walk with you. So he's, uh, some of them, one of them, uh, looked really glitzy. A lot, others like had a lot of people on it and it was different things going on. But then I saw one almost missed it. It was like a hidden, a hidden sign that read, the ancient path. It was very narrow and went up. I knew it was the mountain of the Lord. And I knew it was very similar, like Jesus went up to the Mount of Olives to pray. I knew it was a you know, kind of an isolated place. I knew that there was secrets from God up there. But no one was going up and what kind of dangerous actually. And uh, you know, then the Lord said to you to he said to me, you know, I've offered the ancient path to many people, but they've said no. And just like the Jeremiah six sixteen, if you read it, he says, choose the ancient path. And then it goes on to say, uh, but you many people say no to it. This year he's open uh, he's opening up ancient path revelation. Now this doesn't mean that you pull out the stuff, you know, from the Azusa Street Revival or that you, you know, that you tap into one of the old uh, wells of revival. No, no, this is new. This is ancient stuff that have been, that have been hidden. Colossians 1 this is, this is revelation. These are mysteries that were hidden until this time being revealed. And I've been decreeing Colossians 1.26 and praying for two years now, every single day, saying, Lord, reveal the mysteries that have been hidden from the beginning of time, even. In several verses, been praying those. And then suddenly I'm standing in this encounter with the Lord, and there was a pathway going up. And so we started our journey up the mountain along the ancient path. And I was surprised, actually, it was pretty easy. Uh, once you got going, it wasn't difficult at all. We had to walk single file. There were some other people going. Uh, as well. And when we got up to the top, it was a narrow gate. So we first went through the ancient path and we got to the narrow gate. And of course, my Bible was open to Matthew 7, 13 through 14, where Jesus turned to us and said, 
enter into the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction. And many enter through it, but small is the gate and narrow is the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. Now, most of the time we, we think of this as salvation, which it is true, but you know, he did say this to his disciples, and he was teaching on prayer during, that's during the time where he says, they said, teach us to pray. And it was in, in this time between Matthew 6 and 7, you see that, that he says this word to believers. He says it to his disciples. And he's offering us right now. He says, enter through the narrow gate for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads the other way. It doesn't mean to hell, uh, even though it might be, I don't know, there may be a translation in that. But in this case, He's talking about entering into a place at a time with the Lord. And he said to me, us, he said to all of us that we're there, and you're included because it's the word of the Lord. He said, this year, I'm going to open up the ancient paths that will lead to the narrow gate. And the narrow gate will then lead you to a new destiny, the new life that he's bringing. And I looked around, and hardly anyone had chosen this path because it was you know, I don't know why. It was full of life. It was oh, it was amazing. <clears throat> I just wanted to stay there. Then I went through. After that, by the way, I had another encounter the next night, two nights in a row, and uh, the, the pulled these together in, into it. If you listen to my podcast I told you about, episode 64, I'll tell, I, you know, I talk about the details of this. And there was a nine-month process right now from when I got that revelation, June, uh, excuse me, uh, September, uh, September 19th, 2018. Now it's nine months later. And the Lord had told me, now watch, watch for something to birth nine months later. And he's now going to birth something new. And it has been an intense time of testing. It's been a time where, you know, many people have been uh, pretty weary and overwhelmed with sorrow. In fact, today I was praying and I said, Lord, do you have a word for the people? They are watching my webcast. You know, I hear, I hear it very clearly. It's not like I have a shortage of prophetic words or anything, but I wanted the very thing that's going to help you and put you on the timetable or on the ancient path. And suddenly I got, this happened today when I'm recording and I, I'm, uh, I tell you, it just, I, I got sorrow that hit me. Now, it wasn't just me. I, I have a lot of reasons I could be sorrowful, but I'm not necessarily a sorrowful guy. I, I tend to be positive, and, and I see the Lord in the same light, but I begin to weep and wail, and I felt the pain of people. And Matthew 26, 37, the Lord spoke to me. And he said, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. There's a demonic attack right now over people to try to get you to have sorrow unto death. And I don't necessarily mean that you're going to die, you know, like he died and sad. You know, how did he die? Well, he was sad. No, this is just, a, it might kill your spiritual life. It could kill your gifts. It could kill, you know, this, death doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a physical thing. But there's so many people operating right now with sorrow unto death. Like Jesus, he had this before he went to the cross. But guess what? He went to the cross and he broke it. So I tell you, people have been living under a Matthew 26, 37, a, an attack of sorrow, overwhelmed to the point of death. And he told me to break this attack. So right now, if that's you or you know someone, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, I break the demonic assignment of sorrow that would bring sadness, sickness, death, depression. I break it. It's, it's an attack of the enemy. And even when Jesus spoke this in, Genesis, in Matthew 26, he was about to go to the cross, which he has already done. So you have new life. This, we're going to bring the attack. We're going to bring the sorrow. We're going to bring the grief. It might have been, hey, you know what? You, yeah, you might, maybe you suffered loss or maybe you, you're, it's okay to grieve. But some people have uh, you know, grieved to a point where there's a demonic force been causing you to stay in this loop 
of sorrow, or maybe you lost your job, or you haven't been able to get over something. That's a demonic force. I break it in Jesus' name. And we bring this under the blood of Jesus. We pray, right? We come into agreement, Lord, that you would release, release, release life, joy. Oh my goodness, I'm seeing it happen right now. And I keep seeing faces of people. Even when I was praying earlier, I was seeing faces of people. There's a lot of people under this. And I just speak life to you. Sorrow unto death be broken in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that'll get you going in the morning. And uh, I just broke it today. I didn't have it, but I was breaking it for everybody else. And I knew some people that did. So uh, we actually, just getting through the time of uh, Passover to Pentecost. That's the 50 days. And Passover is like a at Resurrection Sunday, uh, and the, the, it was when uh, the Jewish pa- uh, feast of Passover is when when the Lord chose actually to be crucified, and so we're in this 50-day period between Passover to Pentecost. And Pentecost is this month, and I tell you, the Lord uh, spoke to me. I had several encounters, and I had some amazing things happen uh, during the time of uh, Pentecost and been operating in a new level of hearing the Lord. The Lord is moving, of course, with it came a new level of, of attack. But don't expect that. Do not expect it because God's doing new things right now. But don't be surprised if you get it. and Just go take it to the Lord each day. So my Bible opened to uh, Isaiah 60. And this is what he did. He said, listen, I'm moving on Isaiah 60, verse 1, verse 11, verse 22. You're going to want to write this down. You're going to want to type it out or print it out and get this on your Bible, on your refrigerator, whichever one you go to more, just get it, is, is the Isaiah 60, verse 1, 11, and 22. I'm just going to pray this over you and prophesy this. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. Your gates will always stand open and they will never shut day or night so that people can bring the wealth of the nations and the least of you will become a thousand. Now, I uh, entered it down a little bit. I didn't change the words. The Lord said, he said, prophesy this. He, He said that there's a gate of righteousness that's opening. The glory of the Lord is coming. That's why you want to break off sorrow. Or the shadow of death has been over people. It's the same as the sorrow. We're breaking this off so that you can walk through this Isaiah 60 doorway. Because as this opens, your finances are going to change. Uh, your favor is going to change. Because the lease of you will become a thousand. The, the gate that will never shut will be the wealth of the nation. So here's what happened to me. During the month of Passover, uh, April, actually April 25th, uh, <clears throat> I was in Moravian Falls, North Carolina, visiting, and a gate opened. I saw it, uh, and call it whatever you want, but it was a gate in the spirit, and it was a portal. I had to work through some things to get through it, but once I did, it was favor and finances and land, and this is about to open over. The favor and finances is actually right here from, from Isaiah 60. 1, 11 and 22. I didn't realize because I'd asked the Lord. I said, well, where was that? Because I had the encounter first. It was a little bit opposite me because I was in, you know, Bravian Falls and, it, and I had the encounter first. And then he took me back and I asked him, what was that? And he said that was the, that was the Isaiah 60 gates that are opening for favor and finances. And so the favor is the smallest of you become a, a mighty nation. And also here's the last verse. When he hears the rest of verse 22, and he said it, and uh, he says, In its time, I will do this swiftly. Watch God to move quickly. He's going to do something that's going to move on you. He's going to activate things. I'm telling you, I'm watching people get set free. I'm seeing the root cause coming, I'm seeing stuff happen. People, even with myself and others, I'm shocked. Gates are opening like the the ones that never close. Psalm 24-7, that's 24-7, you know. That's something that's open 24-7. That's the Lord. 
Lift up your heads, O oh, you gates, be lifted up, you ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Lord, we ask now, open the gates. Dry. I just pray right now for the gates, just like we were mentioning earlier, the, the gates of um, that, that will never close, the gates of righteousness that are going to about to open for people to go through, the, the ancient gate. There's so much going. I'm so excited that God's releasing strategies and supernatural experiences right now, and it's going to break the spiritual uh, discouragement and death even off of people and uh there's something new i remember uh when the lord showed me this the first time i was looking in the new testament and i was looking at gates and i was looking at things and then he showed me he says remember when i broke peter out of jail and in in acts 12 james was the first one to be executed and it was like fear breaking out and stuff was going on then peter was next he was in prison acts 12 he was going to be executed the next morning and but there was a prayer meeting going on and the lord shows up with an angel in verse 10 he does a prison break and it was the that was the second uh as he did this you know the chains drop off so the lord right now he's dropping chains off you he's releasing you Read this. It's so powerful. He goes through first. He goes by the first guard, then the second guard. He came, and they were asleep. You know, guards don't go to sleep. They get killed for crying out loud that day. There was iron gates that led to the city. They opened by themselves. I was seeing this, right? Even right now, I'm seeing this happen over you. He's going to walk you through gates opening up in front of you. That in the maybe in the natural and the supernatural also i saw a scene from zechariah 3. i love zechariah 3. it's a court of heaven that you don't normally see and uh, i operate in the courts of heaven you've got to have special permission actually to operate in zechariah 3 but i love zechariah 3 verse 1. i had an encounter years ago my first actually my first heavenly encounter into the courts of excuse me my first courtroom of heaven encounter <clears throat> came back in 2007 I believe it was I was living in Moravian Falls at the time and it was during uh, Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur then he showed me Joshua the high priest standing before the angel of the Lord and Satan standing at his right side accusing him and the Lord said to Satan the Lord rebuke you Satan the Lord who has chosen Jerusalem rebuke you. Is not this man a burning stick snatched from the fire? I tell you, this is a time right now. In that encounter, I saw myself back then. I saw people standing where the enemy had been accusing you. And even right now, nine months after the word of the Lord got released over you at Yom Kippur, something happened. But Satan's accusing you, making you, trying to make you think you failed, trying to make you think, oh, you messed up, you don't qualify. But I say this, the Lord rebuke you. Not, I'm saying to the enemy, the Lord rebuke you, Satan, over the people. Is not this one a burning stick snatched from the fire? In other words, haven't you gone through a fire? You have. And it's been an intense time. This is the wounded warriors that are going to rise up now. I tell you, I saw them on the battlefield. I'm pulling this all together now. The wounded warriors. That Ezekiel 37, uh, breath of God's coming. And also, I saw the hidden ones. These are the ones that God's going to bring. It's a remnant of people that He's kept. These are our sons and daughters. That, in my case, maybe you are a son or daughter, but it's the millennials, or it's uh, my daughter's in her 30s, and and, you know, she'd received Jesus years ago, but, you know, she's just not where I expect her to be. But the Lord says, don't worry. These are the hidden ones. He said, you don't, you don't want them to come in early. You don't want them to come, the new wine, come into the old wine. It'll blow it up, they'll have a bad encounter. So trust the Lord is about to do this. He's now drawing forward. Maybe this is you too. You're, uh, <clears throat> you're listening to me. You don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, I'm just prophesying over you right now that there's a, a destiny over you and there's something you're called to do. Something greater is going to come to you. And I saw a gate of God's glory opening over people in the midst of turmoil 
and confusion. And last month on my Spirit Connection uh, podcast or webcast, I did the the Revelation three doors. This was this is in the May 2018 2019. You can listen to the recording. How to walk through and open the doors before you, the spiritual doors. Here's, I'd recommend listening to that again, taking some notes on that. Walk through the Revelation three eight door that opens with the Revelation three seven key of David. Ask God then to open the Revelation three twenty door to come in and give you revelation. Then Revelation four one come up here. He says, and I will show you what must take place after this. I tell you, Revelation is flowing. Revelation meaning not necessarily the book of Revelation, but prophetic understanding, downloads and strategies flowing from heaven. And some of it is going to be unusual. So uh, it won't violate the Bible, but it it, uh, it is unusual. Like when the Lord first gave me uh, the revelation that he was he was going to use <clears throat> tattoo interpretation years ago. That that route, you know, that was unusual. Then he started showing me, hey, you know what? It's not about whether or not they can have a tattoo. It's about what will cause people to open up to the Lord, know he's, you know, that he's speaking to them. So Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. This is the key to get. If you want a key right now to get through the ancient path, it's called forget the former things and do not dwell on the path, on the past. And see, God's doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? It springs up. He's making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So I tell you, a gate has now opening up. We're now going to see some of the greatest times. Arise and shine. Your light has come and the glory of the Lord is upon you. And I tell you, this is the time where we actually hold the keys because Jesus gave Peter and us the keys to the kingdom, that whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. That's called authority. Most people don't understand that they actually, they have the authority of the Lord, but they don't know it. And that we can bind things on earth. We can try to, like, that's why we shouldn't be judging, because it binds people. And if you're binding them, they get bound spiritually in heaven. You want to loose those chains. I speak that right now, those chains dropping off. And Lord, I pray right now that, uh, that you would release your love and your power. I pray that you would release this from heaven. Strategies and downloads I saw coming this month. And the key to this next revival and move of God is loving people. Love and not judge is the key. We want to also, there's strategies coming because we need to develop kingdom financial strategies uh, because the weather patterns are happening right now, you know, and the strange uh, wiping full cities out. But, you know, there's a minimal amount of death, by the way, which is amazing. And so we just say right now, those strategies to make to, to make money in the kingdom. I keep telling people this. This is the season. Don't pull back. This isn't the season to pull back and sell it all. This is the season to press in and make money and get ready. I'm not, I'm not saying it's because it's going to be millennial and, oh, it's the end of the world. No way. I'm saying so you can be a blessing to the world. That's what's going on. And I've been asking the Lord for money so that I can do things where I don't have to worry. I want to be able to get to this place. When he calls me, like he just called me to do something in the next couple of weeks, I need to go prophesy into a place of government. That's not tied to an offering. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna, you know, in other words, it's new. It that has to be something that's funded by the Lord, and so I I want to release this. I I want to release the the kingdom financial strategy so you can do what God calls you to do when He calls you to do it. You work your regular job, and this happened to me years ago when I first got this. I had my regular job. I wanted to go into ministry trading. He actually had to change things. I became a consultant years ago. And that way I could work, you know, when it was there. And then when I needed to have training, I could go. And I'm releasing this right now over you is that you could get kingdom financial strategies. We're in a time right now over the next seven years 
that we're going to, we need to have freedom. That's what it is. The hidden ones are coming forward. Uh, those who have been put on house arrest are now coming out. Uh, the wounded warriors are going to rise up. And those who have been living in the shadow of the valley of the shadow of death are now coming out. Those who have had the, the, um, the, sh- the, the s- uh, sorrow unto death. I just pray right now. I break, break, break. Break all those things. And I ask now, Lord, open the gate, the gate of righteousness. I pray for those. I I heard the Lord say, there are many people listening to me right now that you're having, you don't realize this, but you're having an encounter with the Lord. And so, Lord, I pray right now, if anyone needs a rededication or you need to come to Jesus for the first time, it's, it's easy. And just start doing this everywhere you go. Something's awakening right now. Uh, I say, I just say, you know, it's real easy. You don't like have to pray a magic prayer. You can say anything, but just ask Jesus into your heart. Just ask forgiveness of your sins. Ask Him to fill you with His Holy Spirit, and then get to know people. You know, follow some, uh, you know, some people on the internet, or you know, get around some positive people. I'm saying right now, I pray for the power on high, dunamis power. I pray that this right now would be the Pentecost power, the wind from heaven, just from Acts chapter 2, would come in Jesus' name. Amen. Woo! Going to be a powerful month. I'm really excited. And, um, Ooh, gonna just have to uh, dial down a minute for me. You know, I gotta sleep after this. Uh, I got some uh, announcements. Uh, they're anointed though. Hold on, because we're gonna do some Q and A. These aren't announcements necessarily. These are just things that we're. I just want to highlight a couple of things. One, I mentioned this. Listen, the str- remember the strategy the Lord gave me. So don't write the book, but release it in a, in a course, which I did back in February. But we're going to do it again. In fact, we're offering it right now for an insanely low price. And it's dive deeper into your destiny. It's a four-week mentoring process that you do online. And it's with me online. And But I'm doing a couple of bonuses that make it crazy. Uh, and also that you get a live phone call with me, even though this is a pre-taped thing. You get a live phone call. Where I'm, it's an activation call. But... Uh, Right now, uh, there's uh, there's a lot going on right now that the four week course. So just go to my website, dougaddison.com, and we're going to do a we've extended it, but we want to make sure you get part of it because it's for a crazy, crazy low price and it's almost giving it away. I, I tell you, my team they they prayed about it, and said, Hey, we we want to offer it at this price. I said, Well, if that's the Lord, let's do it. And so that's what we're doing right now, and, and um, also. The Doug Addison app, which I mentioned early, earlier, consider giving. You can become a partner to DougAddison.com forward slash give or text L-O-V-E to 45888. 45888. You can give by text. Just set it up once. You can keep repeating. All right. Or you can keep retweeting too. Follow me on Facebook and Instagram, Doug T. Addison and Facebook uh, is the Doug Addison. So I'm really excited for what God's doing. And I've got some questions that came in. Now, I did say I pre-taped this, and we we do save the questions. So if you're putting in questions right now, yes, my teams right now, they're, they are online helping you. And uh, you could put in your questions, and we're going to get to those. I use them in podcasts. I use them in times like this. And uh, we have extra questions or the Lord, I asked the Lord, I go, what are people going to be asking? You know, I have a prophet anyway. And so I got some questions, uh, some I've heard before and others that this is what the Lord's just saying right now over this. So one of the questions I get all the kind, all the time is, does, um, you know, when you're talking about Pentecost power and speaking, is this speaking in tongues? Is speaking in tongues required? And my goodness, what a controversial subject for many people. And here's what I believe is you don't have to speak in tongues to have evidence of the Holy Spirit. You know why I know that? Because my mom, who's now in heaven, is one of the most spirit-filled women I knew. She was filled with the Holy Spirit. She never spoke in tongues. And 
I remember the Lord just, you know, speaking to me about that. He says, you know, it's not, it's great if you do. Like Paul says, I wish you all would prophesy. I wish you would speak in tongues. It doesn't matter. What matters is if you fall in love with the Lord and that you have an encounter with the Lord. And so this is not like we're talking about the power of Pentecost coming. You know, it's, it's not the old, uh, you know, maybe an old uh, time meeting necessarily, you know, it'd be great. I love it. I've been, I released a prophetic word a couple months ago that new tongues are coming. And so I've been activating that word myself and I've been listening to different tongue worship songs or anyone who breaks open in the singing in the spirit. And there's so much power in it. And I've been doing it on YouTube or um, even um, <clears throat> with like uh, on a, any of the music stations. One of my favorite ones I've been telling everybody is uh, my friend Kim Walker Smith who with Jesus Culture and her first solo album is Here Is My Song. And she's got, and you can Google this, it's actually free on YouTube or you can, you know, I, I stream it through Amazon but it's called Spontaneous Song 1 and then the second one is Spontaneous Song 5 live and she goes in there's there's actually four obviously there's one through five on this album but I like those two where she starts out with praying and releasing something new and she's praying in tongues and then the second one the the five Spontaneous Song 5 my goodness for me when I need to hear the Lord I put that on because it opens something up in the heavenly realm. And there's, uh, those are the two right now. And so I really just pray, Lord, I pray for those who need to sing in the spirit. Think of it that way. Sing in the spirit. Just do whatever it is. Just let it flow in Jesus' name. Next question. I've been so discouraged for a long time that I've given up hope. What do I do? Well, that's a, I'm, first of all, I'm really sorry. And I seriously uh, know that it is not easy to do what I'm saying to do, uh, but it's not impossible. The hardest part is getting started, breaking discouragement. Once you break through, you get a breakthrough of discouragement, everything else is going to flow in your life. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but a longing fulfilled is a tree of life. That's Proverbs. And the... I tell you, this is what you want to do is break off, do everything you can right now. You know what I do when I'm feeling down? I won't let myself. I break it off. I, you know, I'm not like, uh, if you've been around me, I, this stuff doesn't come, I, I, you know, it does not come naturally. I need to actually press in. And like Hebrews said, is that you have to, uh, to enter into his rest, you know, that you battle, you, you need to, to contend for things to enter into his rest. And so we're into a, moving into a season where the Lord said that this is the word for this year. Now we're nine months into it is in, in um, uh, Jeremiah 6, 16, he said, choose the ancient path, the one you will go so that you can find rest. We're moving into a time, even though it doesn't look like it, you stand on faith until you see it. Now faith is evidence of the things that you don't see. I'm standing on the word of the Lord and that he says this and I'm going to stand on it even though it doesn't look like it. So I go into denial of the attack of the enemy and keep praying and prophesying. That's why I use verses. So if you've been discouraged for a long time, I just want to recommend that you get, listen to these verses that I'm talking about, get some Bible verses of, of encouragement and snap out of things. You know, get up in other words. Get up and don't allow the enemy to over, overpower you. Don't allow it to happen. I pray right now for it, you know, over you and anybody else. And maybe it takes some time with me. It took time. There was a time in my life when even though I had the Holy Spirit, I had the Lord, I was moving, you know, I was uh, pastoring and doing stuff, but I fell into depression. In fact, I had to get out of antidepressants at that time. There was so much loss in my life, but I'm, I'm free now. And I'm not saying get off of any medications without, you know, without uh, verification. Uh, I had to work my way off, and but I'm saying right now, don't let the enemy discourage you. Don't let him win. The Lord's got a destiny for you, and this is a month that if you don't, uh, just don't believe those lies of the enemy, and you're going to see something start to break. Here's another question. 
I felt the power of God lift off something off me when you prayed. And it still feels like I'm uh, walking through mud. Now, I hear this question a lot because no matter what, when I do these kind, kinds of prayers, they're called uh, activation prayers. And sometimes you'll feel something, whether you feel it or not, it doesn't matter. What really matters is that it happens in heaven. And we know that whatever's happening, whatever we read in the Bible, or whatever is, the Lord is doing right now, it's going on on earth as it is in heaven. And so that's why I like to find some Bible verses that line up with what you need. And so uh, as this starts to happen, you know, like there were so many times when I got healed of chemical sensitivity, it took me a few years. I was still walking through mud. That's the way it felt when you described that, that you, I felt things would lift off me. Then it went, oh my goodness, it felt like the wind was blowing against me. But I tell you, God's going to do something new. You just have to get lined up. What you do is it, it's called um, aligning yourself or positioning yourself for God to move. And the way I do it is that I get some Bible verses that back it up, back up whatever I want to, to, that I need. If it's healing, encouragement, I get away from discouraging people. I put on encouraging move, music. I actually get a few people to pray because... Uh, maybe what you're going through right now, uh, everybody, if you need a breakthrough, it might be that you're just doing, trying to do it alone. And Ecclesiastes 4.12 says one will be overpowered, two can defend themselves, three, it, it can be like a cord of three strands. It's not easily broken. And you tell you, you want to move away from being overpowered. And I recommend getting at least three, two people to pray with you. That would be three, two or more to pray with you. You can do it by text. You can do it over the internet. But start to get that breakthrough by praying and coming into agreement. I take communion every day. If you can do it a few times a week, and that would be powerful. What I have right now is that dive deeper in your destiny actually walks you through, you know, how I do it. I walk you through a, a how I do my encounters. I I give you the things that that uh, I use for spiritual warfare, and it's a it's just a way of not trying to sell you. Something. I'm trying to get you out of out of this place of feeling stuck. Many people feel that right now. And I'll do another prayer here in a minute. Wow. So glad that you are feeling something, even if you don't feel. If you're a thinker, maybe you don't have to worry about the feeling. Don't let that get, uh, you know, get to you. All right, here's another question. In the last nine months, a lot has happened, and it feels like I actually went backwards as opposed to being promoted or, or birthing something new like you're talking about. I'm telling you, people, I hear people everywhere, including myself, is right at a promotion. If you're getting promoted in the spirit or God is birthing something new in your life, you might feel like you backslid. You might got, get the opposite because the enemy wants to discourage you. He wants you to give up. He, he t I tell you, he wants you to not believe these things are going to happen or you step into this new place. This is what happened to me. When I birthed that prophetic word, or I didn't birth it, I released that prophetic word last October. I got it in September. I released it in October. I started, October was a good month. I had a good time. November or December, I started to feel like I was going backwards, but I knew by faith. I knew it. And that said, I must be stepping into a new time. And I kept pressing through, pressing through, and sure enough, it changed. And I knew it. That's what's going on right now. You might feel that way. So here we are nine months later. I've never had a baby, nor do I want to. But spiritually, it's very similar. And there's it's a messy process. And it, there's things that, can, that, that need to happen. But we're at a place right now to birth this new thing that God is bringing. And I'm expecting to see and hear something new over you. So here's another question. Uh, uh, can you give me advice on how to activate what God is speaking to me? Well, uh, I actually, I've got a book called, a little small book. Actually, you, could, it, you can get the download version of the paperback. And it's called God Spoke Now What? How to Activate a Prophetic Word. And I'm not just trying to sell a book here. I'm trying to help you to understand that when God speaks, you have to do something. And that requires doing something positive, doing something, you know, towards it. And here's what I do. The first thing I do when God speaks is, and I hear him, 
I write it down. That's number one. Number two, I might do a little bit of research on it, you know, and buy a book or, you know, get, start praying over it. Those are activation steps that might help you. And it will, you do, the more you do that, the more powerful it can become. And God will open things over you. So here's, I have this other question here is, you know, I've not been able to hear the Lord in a while. What can I do? And again, I'm not trying to sell any. That's why this, this one is free. I have a webinar that you can take. It's a free webinar and it's called How to Know If You're Hearing God. And it's helped a lot of people activate what God's doing. You just go to DougAddison.com forward slash how to know, or you can text to uh, the, the word hear God, one word, text hear God to 90100, 90100, and you'll get a, a, a link to my free 45-minute uh, course that will help you to be able to hear the voice of God. And it's power. In fact, so, we, so many people told me years ago, you know, if you would, um, if you could figure out how to know the difference between God, yourself, and the enemy, how do I do that? And well, uh, I always said that you'd have a best-selling book. Well, guess what? I didn't put it into a book. I'm giving it away free in a workshop, and I'm so excited for what's been going on. I hear a lot of people say it's really opened things up for them, and we're going to be doing a lot of uh, cool stuff come the summer. I hope you could be part of the next couple of weeks. We have this uh, dive deeper into your destiny. And it's actually the, the amazing part why we're doing it is it's, it's nine months ago. I got this revelation that the Lord told me something was going to happen in June. Here we are. He showed me, I want you to, you know, release it in a, you know, in a written form, not a, not a book, but I did put it in writing. But there's things that sometimes a book will not actually capture. And so I had to put it in a four-week uh, thing. And uh, let me just say this. I want to say God is doing something new right now. And you're about to birth into something. And, it, and it's messy right before birth. It might be painful. The con contractions are happening. You know, there's things that are going on. I want to encourage you that the month of June, call upon the power of the Lord. Lord, I call down on earth as it is in heaven, I ask now that you would download strategic plans, books from heaven. I saw many different books opening up from heaven. I ask now, Lord, for the uh, Pentecost power. I saw the Pentecost power opening up over people. And that, I don't necessarily know what it means, but I just want it. I want that. Download us with it, Lord. Give us that uh, the, the, the flame, those tongues of fire, whatever that might mean for any of you. Sing in the Spirit. Begin to press in. I tell you, even today, when I was feeling down, I got up. I put on a worship tune, you know, on, on YouTube. I got up. I just started singing in the Spirit. And within a short period of time, it, it broke. It broke like that. So, And I've walked through long-term illness. I tell you, I know what it's like to be chronically ill for over three years I am now fully healed, and I have to tell you that I have compassion for people who are suffering. And I'm asking now, Lord, break, break, break open these things. Break off anything. This long-term attack of the enemy now. Break off the, the uh, emotional upsets. Uh, break off the, uh, the, the sorrow unto death. I pray right now. One of the things I did, um, part of my healing, was breaking out of the shadow of death. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil is, is a psalm. But now I just say, come out of that shadow of death. People have been walking through the, uh, the wilderness time. And it's been the dark night of the soul or dark night of the spirit, whatever you want to call it. Just get out of there right now. I was there for a while, and that's not a place to live. It's not a badge to say, wow, it's great. Or that Job season, these things are coming to an end right now to prepare you for what's coming. So, Lord, I pray, I prophesy by the power 
by the blood, by the name of Jesus, I call forth those things that are not as though they are. I now speak on earth as it is in heaven. And just like I'm standing in the room right now where I have encounters with the Lord, and I pray, Lord, that you would open the heavens over each person. That each person needs something, and each person is, is so uh, important to you. So I'm asking for dreams and visions. I'm asking for angelic encounters and visitations from you, Lord, whatever that might look like. I pray that you would open up the Bible. And there was an impartation, by the way, that the Lord told me that that needed to be done. And it was it was an impartation where uh, I don't remember the verse now. I forgot it, but I, I remember he told me to do it and where you could actually Google the verse. It was in Luke, I believe. Uh, and it. It was where Jesus put his hand on his disciples on their head and and he and he said, Now I open your mind to understand the scriptures. And this was after, I think it was like right around the road to Emmaus, and it was after the uh, after he was uh, crucified, rose from the dead, before he went back to heaven, before Pentecost, he opened their minds that he could understand the scriptures. And he he saying to do this. I pray this because I had an encounter with him just recently where that happened in the encounter. And he placed his hand on me and others in this in this vision. And he said, I open your mind now to understand the scriptures. So, Lord, I do that with everybody. I open your spirit. I open your mind. I open things to understand the Bible, to understand how you're speaking to be able to understand the things of the Spirit, the deep things. I open them up now by the power and blood of Jesus Christ. In His name, amen. Wow, well, I, I hope you can um, step into the Pentecost power this month. I hope you can break out of the things, if that's you, and help other people do the same. I pray right now that these things would come to you. In Jesus' name, I'm so excited. All right. Bless you all. See you on the internet.